Hello, I am the Reverend John Bethune. I was born in 1751 on the Isle of Skye in the parish of Sleet. My father was Angus John Bethune and my mother was Christian Campbell. My family was not very well to do, but I showed promise and our minister of the time encouraged me to go into the ministry. I was very fortunate to attend King's College in Aberdeen. I was awarded a small scholarship of five pounds to help with my tuition and expenses, and I graduated in 1772. I then returned to Skye and found that many of my community were emigrating to North Carolina, where they hoped to find greater opportunities. I joined them along with some members of my family, my mother, brother, and sisters, and we arrived in North Carolina in 1773. As one of the first ministers in the region, I helped establish Mount Carmel Presbyterian Church. And there's a highway marker pointing out to where my church was established and naming me. I lived in the same area of Alan Don MacDonald and his wife Flora MacDonald, the woman who helped save the life of Bonnie Prince Charlie. However, you know that this was an uneasy time for the colonies. Many people were not happy with the British government and their demands. Their unrest and unhappiness was soon to come to a head. When the Revolutionary War broke out and the King's Standard was raised, I joined Alan MacDonald's company. We fought at the Battle of Moores Creek Bridge, unsuccessfully, I must say, February 27, 1776. We were captured by the victorious Rebel Army and forced to march from North Carolina to Philadelphia where we were imprisoned at the Walnut Street Jail. It was a dreary, inhospitable, and miserable place. We were released after some time, a few months, and I made my way via New York to Halifax in Nova Scotia. Once again, I joined the Royal Highland Emirates, the 84th Regiment of Foot. I served both battalions in the 84th, the 1st and 2nd, as their chaplain. At the end of the war, the 84th was disbanded, and I found myself in Montreal, and while there, established a Presbyterian congregation, somewhat small. However, this was to become the mother of the Presbyterianism Church in Canada. While in Montreal in 1782, I met, and subsequently married, Veronique Catherine Wadden, the daughter of John Etienne Wadden, Jonathan Wadden was a founder member of the Northwest Company and his wife, Marie-Joseph de Guier, a respected French-Canadian. By 1787, we had moved to what is now Ontario and settled in Williamstown. I set up church, St. Andrews, among fellow Scotsmen, many of whom were Gaelic speakers like myself, and old members of the 84th and others who were royal to the king, loyalists, I was warmly welcomed. This was not the only church I established in the area. My own church in Williamstown, of course, another in St. Andrews in Lancaster, St. John's in Cornwall and Salem, now united in Somerstown. Veronique and I were blessed with a good-sized family of ten, three daughters and six sons, and one child who came to us as an orphan. My daughters, Cecilia, Christine, and Anne, and our other Anne MacLeod married and were comfortable. My sons, Angus, like his grandfather, Jean Etienne, joined the Northwest Company and later the Hudson's Bay Company. Norman was a merchant and King's auctioneer. John was dean of the Cathedral of Montreal and principal of McGill. James Gray was a banker, and Alexander Neal joined the Anglican ministry and later became the Bishop of Toronto. Our youngest son, Donald, was a lawyer and owner of steamships. In 1812, I served as chaplain with the British forces led by George Richard John MacDonald in the 1813 attack on Augustinsburg, New York. I was very fortunate in my life. I had a very good wife, a large successful family, and a comfortable home. I had a congregation that supported me both in attendance and financially. I had an annual salary of 50 pounds and was granted 2,000 acres of land acknowledging my service to the king, along with a lot in the town of Cornwall. My descendants have the honor of, of 
of being Dr. John Darn. My descendants have been an honor to me, Dr. Norman Bethium of China and actor Christopher Plummer among them. I knew by the year of 1815 that my health was deteriorating, and I did urge my congregation in June of that year to seek an assi assistant minister. I was getting on in years and didn't want my flock to be lured away from the Church of Scotland. I wanted them to live in peace with the Roman Catholics, with whom I had always had good relations, however, not to embrace their beliefs. On the 23rd of September, 1815, I took my last breath on earth. Upon my demise, Veronique sold our home to that esteemed explorer and map maker, David Thompson, who with his wife, Charlotte Small, lived there until 1838. My beloved wife, Veronique, went to live with our second daughter, Christy, and her husband, Robert Henry, in Coburg, Ontario. She lived with them all of her 31 years. My home, one of the eldest and oldest my home, one of the oldest heritage homes in Ontario, still stands today in Williamstown. You may visit it just to see where I and my family had lived. My eternal resting place is in St. Andrew's Churchyard, close by. <laughs>